Welcome back everybody. I hope you're doing well. I'm actually going to be getting my thoughts on something that I don't really normally talk about on my channel, which is more uh, modern gaming stuff. In this case, I want to give my thoughts about the whole uh, PlayStation 5 Pro thing that's been really happening. And uh, essentially, I'm going to be talking about uh, a little bit about my thoughts, of course. That's why you're here. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk about why I believe Sony is actually kind of playing catch-up with a lot of the rest of the industry. Uh, what I've been seeing happening over the past few years, several years, a couple decades, actually. Um, and then what I think console manufacturers may be able to do to kind of get back on track, so to speak. And where does that lead us in the end? Where, what, what, what can we do? So... Stick around, have fun, and I'll see you after the intro. All right, well, let's talk about the PS5 Pro, PlayStation, PlayStation 5 Pro. So I believe this entire thing, so the PlayStation 5 Pro who have not you know let's say let's say you you're not familiar with the situation so sony is releasing a playstation 5 pro and a lot of people generally think it's not that exciting of a release versus let's say a new console let's say uh to fit the actual higher price of the ps5 pro so they're keeping the price of the regular playstation 5 the same and then depending on your the territory you're in they're you know adding a couple several hundred dollars several hundred uh local currency insert local currency here onto the price and that's what you get for ps5 pro which this is more of a evolutionary improvement and evolutionary change versus a new console generation so ps5 pro you've got higher sharper uh, uh visuals you got better frame rate going from the 30 uh fps on the visual mode the high visual mode fidelity mode to more of a 60 frames per second standard etc 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 faster ssd yeah so there's a lot of the details that other people have covered but i wanted to kind of get into I think this is a symptom of what's been happening over the past 20 odd years, 20, 24, 25 years of the PCification of game consoles. And what do I mean by that? Where game consoles are becoming more like PCs because of the PC hardware. Um, you know, we're starting, we started seeing that changeover as far as the software generation going going back to like the three xbox 360 going into xbox one last generation or so uh that that you really started to see that kind of come into full play and we're essentially and you know the, the console hardware it started shifting from more let's say if we go back 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 more specialized like electronics um, if you're talking about Sega in the 90s and maybe, of course, you know, 80s stuff, a little bit more arcade based. So game consoles were kind of like, you know, arcade uh, uh, spinoffs. So there's a lot of arcade ports and some of the hardware was more, um, you know, arcade based or more single unique board personal computer type thing where, you know, the turn of the millennium, you started seeing directly more pc type hardware with the xbox in a game console you know you're going to have a pc on your tv basically with the direct xbox so we started seeing a bit more of that direction happen in that last generation where the xbox one was essentially just a, a mid-range gaming computer in a shell running a custom version of windows 8 and that's that's what you got and that was kind of they centered the the microsoft centered the entire generation around having being the one the one console for entertainment for gaming for your you know for for a lot of different things and we started seeing that a bit more and in this generation with the playstation 5 with the series consoles 
uh, you started seeing that the hardware was essentially, you know, customized PC hardware. And it's no longer more of those, um, like PlayStation 3, where you had the cell, the IBM cell chip technology, where it was a just different architecture and different um, parts versus what we're doing now, which is more PC ification of consoles. And that's also coming into um, tandem with the whole digital future of game licenses, where essentially, you know, downloading a game versus buying a physical disc or cartridge uh, is been has been the trend, has been the way that things have been going. And I actually covered that in my talk at Southeast Game Exchange, which you can find on my channel. Essentially is the licenses shift from being on a disc, something like this, where you, you know, you control how and when you can install and play and what you can do uh, with your game versus something that's more tied to, tied to a digital server or a direct download that is tied to an account. Well, over the years, the trend has been more people have been buying digital copies of games. And right now we're sitting, at least what I saw late last year into early this year, about 80% of all console gamers are buying games digitally and 20% roughly are buying games physically. So, um, and then rolling back to that, only 50% of gamers are playing on gaming consoles or PC and the other 50 are mobile, which is a whole different other thing. Um, but that's the trend. And what do companies do when there's a market and a trend. They're going to follow that. They're going to say, what's, what's the majority of people doing? Let's go ahead and make money and, you know, base our console generation off of that. And that's what you're seeing now with the PlayStation 5 Pro, where you have the base model of that. The main model of the PS5 Pro has no disk drive. You can buy an add-on, which is great for keeping that license in there, the disk license uh, able to be used, but by and large, uh, that that control is is going away. We have the Series X console, the special edition console that's disc discless. You have the Series S, which has been always discless. So we've been moving that direction, and I think Sony has been playing catch up this whole time, in my opinion. And I'm again, I'm uh, I'm a little bit uh, biased because. Uh, because again, you know, I've, I've said it in other videos, but I used to work for Microsoft, not in the Xbox gaming division or anything like that, but it, you know, got to see on the marketing side ish that Microsoft really back when the Xbox one was coming out and everybody saw it too, uh, was that, you know, they really were pushing for that digital future, digital first future game pass, you know, having that sweet, uh, that sweet subscription where you can get the newest games. Uh, day one, you can play them on your PC, you can play them on your mobile device, you can stream them, you can play them on your Xbox, you can play them everywhere you want. That has really been kind of the driver of this, the the, the fulcrum of this entire uh, digital future. And that also started back on PC with Steam really being kind of the central marketplace for a long time. Uh, and you have others, of course, but uh, GOG and Epic and all this stuff. Um, but PC is largely 99%. It's digital. 1%, I guess, statistically is physical. So that's been the trend. And Sony has been kind of in denial of that. PlayStation 4, they try to make... They, they did that zinger where like, hey, how do you trade your games to your friends? And they showed the meme where the, you know, the, the, the guys were, were trading the game disc. They're just handing it one to another. And yeah, that was funny. Um, I thought it was hilarious, and that was kind of a big uh, win for Sony then. But long term, they were setting, I feel like they were setting people up um, for failure because of that inevitable. They knew they were going to be going all digital, I believe. I don't have proof. But that's where the market was going. It was all digital. And, you know, Xbox was on board. PC, of course, has been on board. Mobile, 50% of the market is all digital, of course. So Sony has been kind of, you know, with that traditional console, which I love. Uh, it's it's fine. You know, having that physical disc is good. That's that's where they saw a lot of the player base 
and they wanted to cater to that and i'm i'm one of those people i love it i do have a ps4 i didn't buy it brand new but i have it um and i do enjoy that console but i feel like sony has been kind of up to this point been in denial they've been doing a lot of digital stuff but publicly they've been like yeah we're physical media you know blah 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 up through to the ps5 um so market wise it totally makes sense that they're going to be doing discless and it kind of sucks because you know people are surprised they're like wait a minute why has this console got no disk drive and you know as their their next step is you know no disk drive ripping off the band-aid with that one because again 80 percent of gamers buying digital catering to that market um so it's it's kind of harder to accept um because sony has also been catering towards that console versus pc market up until recently where consoles are distinct from pcs you have different implied rules where you put in a disc and it plays games and that's the primary focus but of course you've had a lot more digital content you've had sony bringing over their games to pc in the past few years and microsoft this entire time has been building its entire ecosystem so yeah it's it, it's kind of us physical collectors we're we're kind of you know we're in the minority and sony's seeing that and finally acknowledging it publicly by introducing this so i was actually thinking about what makes consoles and pcs kind of distinguished from each other and why do people still kind of you know they have that that war that pc master race versus consoles and people like that feeling of having that console game they set and forget it they don't have to worry about upgrades but right now we're in that that weird realm where the ps5 pro can do the same stuff as ps5 but slightly better with better technology ps5 can still hang on to your ps4 games but it looks slightly better so we're starting to move to that um that blending of generations ps6 whatever form that will be will probably be just a better hardware upgrade to that you know and there's not going to be as much of a distinction distinction for that it's just going to be more generational more like pcs where you have graphics cards you have um different you know game engines and whatnot what can handle it and you know pc it's very very fluid for uh generations that's not really you know not really a thing much anymore except if you pay attention to uh, hardware like amd intel um nvidia you know it, all those manufacturers making different generations that's kind of been the increasing of you know the potential for these newer games but i think what would bring us back is if console manufacturers were to kind of draw an artificial line in the sand and design design more clear generations actually bring back the excitement for what the next console is because right now i get it the technology you want things to be compatible from one gen to another we've been what four years into this new generation and we're still hanging on the ps4 still hanging on to xbox one it's great i love the compatibility of it but we need to have games that are specifically designed for the newer consoles draw the line in the sand you know have more definitive generational games that are only available on that newer generation you know you're probably and again i'm not a game designer or developer clearly but you're going to cut down on costs because you're not going to be designing for a bunch of different hardware um, you're going to be bringing back the excitement yeah you're going to be leaving some of your audience out but that's always been the thing that's what people really like about consoles is that you can go that's that killer app of going to the next console i know for me for the longest time i would not buy a new console unless i had 10 definitive console specific console exclusive games for that console out once i made that list once i got that you know i want these 10 games it could take a couple years i would then go out and buy the console um, did that for a 360 you did that for ps3 did that for you know after that um so for me bringing back the excitement by having console exclusive games would really help uh you know generation exclusive games let me be specific drawing that line and hey this game is only available and only taking advantage of this better hardware that would 
it's a little bit more artificial, but I think it would it would be beneficial. Uh, get better games out, cut costs, that type of thing, but also drive um, wanting people wanting to buy those new consoles. I don't think there needs to be any more pro consoles. I feel like if we're getting to the point where we're going to be doing hardware upgrades, if we wanted to keep that that console feel, just have a good five six years, draw the line in the sand. Bring out the new hardware that's substantially better than the old hardware. Bring out those new games that are only going to work on the new console. But keep compatibility for the old games. I love that. Keep that. And go. Um, you know, by doing that, again, you're going to have developers that are designing experiences around those that new hardware. Uh, Nintendo, up until this point, has been the one that's been really doing that. I mean, a lot of them have been gimmicks, but you have like the Wii, the Wii U... Uh, switch you know a lot of these different consoles have different things that make them unique between the two mobile uh, touch screen you know they're iterative they, they kind of are based off of each other generally um, but they're new experiences and that's what's really been driving people and myself to buy nintendo based consoles so having more of that generational divide to drive people towards that generation while keeping compatibility the the older uh, games because again it's just it's a digital license and the hardware itself is going to be realistically it's going to be based off of the same uh, or similar core similar uh, uh, development uh, structure so you know you're just going to have better hardware you can introduce different gimmicks with controllers and whatever but make more of a distinction between console generations draw a line in the sand for uh, uh generation exclusives for games just to say hey cut it off make the games that are designed for the newer stuff and leave away the old stuff so that we're not just seeing mediocre you know s certain games that are like they you know again you know they're designed for ps5 but they still work on ps4 or they're made for series x but there's they still their xbox one games as well and uh, and then you get you get um, a, a more medium experience because console manufacturers had to or, or these developers had to develop for both types of systems. So you don't have something that's really revolutionary and new and fun and and you have something that's kind of an amalgamation in between because they're kind of designing for everything. So um, that's how I feel. That's just my personal opinion. If you wanted to keep that console um, experience. Draw a line in the sand, make it more distinctive, make, you know, don't do any mid, mid release console upgrades and stuff. Just get the new version out. That might not make it 10 year, uh, uh, console life cycles, but you know, there's gotta be something. There's gotta be something if you, you know, or else they're all just going to be PCs, which I'm fine with, but I'm going to miss that physical game because I'm a big physical gamer. Um, that physical license, that physical, that killer app of the console. It's just going to be gaming PCs in different flavors. You're going to have your Steam Deck, which is amazing, mobile. You're going to have your, your PC on your TV and your PC in your, your computer room or wherever the heck you, you put it. And that's it. And there's going to be no differences. Nobody will want to buy consoles anymore because the, you just buy a PC. You know that whole argument. But what do I think we can do? To really, if we were as a community, to want to say no to this, this thing. I'm saying, hey, you know what, PS5 Pro, it's cool, but no, I don't really want to buy into that whole idea. Um, you saw what people, what happened when people voted with their wallet for Concord, right? Concord, I, I keep wanting to say Concord, Concord, Concord. It's that New England. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, people didn't buy it. People didn't buy into it. Uh, they spent a lot of money on it. Unfortunately, I feel bad for the developers. Um, but yeah, you know, nobody bought it. They ended up cutting it, axing it, spent a lot of money, um, really, you know, wasting a lot of money, unfortunately, um, on that whole, um, that whole thing. But people didn't, they voted with their wallet. They said, no, I don't want to get another live service game. I don't want to get another Overwatch 2, Team Fortress 2, 
uh, a character class driven team shooter type of thing this this isn't it voted with my wallet i didn't buy it and that you know when enough people did that you saw what happened so if you don't like this don't buy into it just don't don't buy into it vote with your wallet if enough people do that then these console manufacturers might see those changes they might say well people don't like this idea what can we do i also say also on the side continue to support physical media i think that supporting companies supporting um initiatives to release physical media is definitely the right way to go for a lot of reasons preservation and 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 you know being able to control your license a little bit more even though it's tied to an account um if we were to vote with our money reject the things that we don't want to see happen and vote with our wallet for the things we want to see and want to back like uh you know some stuff like evercade you know those those games those consoles i think are are a fantastic idea and you know all these other different um limited production type physical media companies there's there's a few out there um if you like those vote with your wallet if you don't like what they're doing vote with your wallet but whatever happens this is the future that we're going to be living in a digital first future where game consoles because of internet connectivity will less and less commonly have disk drives we're going to have a more smearing of generations they'll just have slight improvements and we're going to have games that are just kind of they're made for everything and they're in my opinion a bit less exciting because you know there's no appeal there's no drive to get the new console because it's and the new game because it's just mar it looks marginally better it's not pushing the envelope as much and there's a lot of reasons behind that but and i'm generalizing quite a bit for this so um <laughs> i know i'm probably not going to make a whole lot of fans making this video but i've i just wanted to throw out my two cents about um, what I'm seeing happening with the PCification of consoles, the hardware, the games becoming less um, generational and more just, just you know, slow drip, slow improvements um, around ecosystem. There's some good behind it. There's some not so good if you like the traditional console uh, experience of having new stuff every few years that are exciting. Um, and you know what we can do about it what i think console manufacturers and console companies like sony and microsoft can do to really bring back the excitement is to draw the line in the sand like i keep saying just you know cut it off don't make those pro consoles make distinct clear new consoles cut off the games so that they're developed for one or the other and they're still compatible future forward compatible um with the newer stuff but you know otherwise this entire industry is going to become more stale um the the talents of our amazing game developers around the world are going to be um they're, they're going to be wasted um more and more people are going to be driven to pc experiences which i love but uh that's what i see happening with console the console um, ecosystem, the console market is just going to be more and more stale if, if there's less excitement. And that's, I think this is just a symptom of that. So anyways, I appreciate you hanging around. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think below. Do you think, do you agree with me about what I think about PS5 Pro and generally what I said today, do you have a completely different opinion, which is also valid? I want to hear about it in the comments. There's no hate. You know, if, if you disagree, I don't hate you. I promise that uh, we're all we're all here to to disagree and agree on different things that we want to. And, you know, that's what that's what life is all about. So I appreciate all of you. Let me know if uh, there's anything you want to see in the future. But appreciate you coming around. Have a great day and game on.